be seated. A little bit concerned like every pastor is this time of year, Memorial Day weekend. Everybody takes off. and We got a lot of people that left. Well, we got some visitors here this morning. Thank you for filling in the ranks just a little bit. We've got special visitors this morning as well. Of course, graduations tonight. Church this morning, we know that. But we've got uh, the quartet from Landmark Baptist College in Haines City, Florida, here this morning, and their fearless leader is Brother Dan Danny Chamberlain, and you're going to hear his accent, and you're going to say, Haines City, Florida? <laughs> Doesn't that up? And uh, I'm going to turn it over to them right now. They're going to do a few numbers, but maybe you want to introduce them, Brother Danny, whatever you want. And then one of you guys is going to use this mic, and you're, you're going to have to sing from up there so that mic is working. So the sound guy doesn't know this. Um, that mic needs to be on because one of the mics... Um, isn't working. You know, you know that. All right. Good deal. Okay. Are you on? I don't think so. Let's see. I, got a, I got a light on, but. It's got to be the green light. <laughs> okay. You're good. You got it. Okay. Hey, it's good to be here. This is my first time this far up in northern Michigan. I did cross the bridge back about 20-something uh, years ago, uh, but I was scared back then. I wouldn't even drive across it because I had heard all the horror stories about people driving across it. In fact, uh, a buddy of mine lived in Sheboygan for a while, married a girl down there. He was a truck driver, and he says, I've driven across that bridge, and the truck in front of me, I seen the back wheels of his trailer come off the bridge. I'm like, I don't need to see that. <laughs> and, uh, but it's a pleasure for us to be here. My name is Danny Chamberlain. I've got my wife, Rita, and my daughter, Becca, is playing the piano. And we have four young men from our college, and they'll be coming up here in just a minute, and I'll share more about the college. But uh, we're out on the road. This is our men's uh, singing group, and uh, I'll let them. They'll. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves right off the bat when they come up. That way, they can do it, and I won't mess anything up. But uh, we're privileged to be here today. We're excited to be here. Been looking forward to this, and uh, I want to apologize now for Miss Mackey. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, she. <laughs> Uh, she's one of our biggest supporters, and uh, yeah. <laughs> everybody needs to be ministered to, amen. So, uh, no, we uh, we praise the Lord for her, and uh, uh, we love having her down there. And uh, uh, look, we we've looked forward to coming up here and being a part of your church. We've heard so much about you, and uh, I know when she's up here, she talks about us, and when we're when she's down there, she talks about you guys, and. Uh, uh, she misses everything but the snow, and uh, uh, I was born and raised in the state of Maine, so I know a little bit about the snow, and uh, I don't miss it at all, and uh, I think yesterday it was about 86 degrees down there, down there. Pastor mentioned, I think it was Thursday or Friday, he mowed the lawn out here for the first time, and uh, I'm like, well, we've been doing that for like four months, but, uh, uh, but we're, lo we're glad we could be up here. And uh, looking forward to what the Lord has in store. I'll share some more about the college in just a few minutes, but I'll have the guys come up and uh, they can sing a couple songs for us. Are you in there? 
My name is Caleb Parsons. I am from Haines City, Florida. I am a sophomore at Lambert Baptist College studying secondary education. I was saved at the age of 16. Hello, church. My name is Caleb Shear. I'm a sophomore as well at Landmark Baptist College. I'm from Hurricane, West Virginia, and I was saved at the age of eight. Hello, church. My name is Josiah Chamberlain. I'm a junior at Landmark Baptist Church. I was born in Clinton, Maine. I'm studying local church ministries and media, and I was saved at the age of 18. Hello, church. My name is Isaac Lefever from Bulgaria, and I'm a sophomore at Landmark Baptist College, and I was saved at the age of 12. And also at the piano is my sister, Becca Chamberlain. She's a 2019 graduate of Landmark Baptist College. Three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire Because before the king they would not bow But they said, listen, king, let it be known We serve a living God, we're not alone I know that God can do it to him, there's nothing to it. I know he'll see you through his sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that he is able, mighty is he. They marched around the walls of Jericho. They knew that they would fall, God told them so. Just like he worked for them, he's working now. Our God will never change, he has great power. Well, I know that God can do it to him, there's nothing to it. I know he'll see you through his sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that he is able, mighty is he. Well, I know that God can do it to him, there's nothing to it. I know he'll see you through his sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that he is able, mighty is he. I know that he is able, mighty is he. fall of man, God devised a master plan. He exchanged the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left his throne on high, came to earth to bleed and die. He said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. He is mine. Beyond all measure, he is mine. I have pardon full and free through the blood he shed for me. Safe forever I shall be, he is mine. God's mercy and his grace, he's prepared for us a place. Words cannot describe the matchless beauty there. We will praise the perfect lamb, king of kings, the great I am. He has made the joys of heaven ours to share. He is mine, he is mine, mine. I am blessed beyond all measure, he is mine. I have pardoned full and free, through the blood he shed for me, saved forever I shall be, he is mine. Beyond all measure, he is mine. I have pardoned full and free. Through the blood he shed for me, saved forever I shall be, he is mine. He is mine. He is mine. I am blessed beyond all measure, he is mine. I have pardoned full and free. Through the blood he shed for me, saved forever
Beyond all measure, He is mine. I have pardon full and free through the blood He shed for me. Saved forever I shall be. He is mine. I have pardon full and free through the blood He shed for me. Saved forever I shall be. He is mine. He is mine. He's a Presbyterian right there. He knows. He's a, he's a Presbyterian. <laughs> Is it hot in here? I didn't turn the air on. I'm, I'm trying to be nice to you ladies. I wanted it on, but I, I, you know, we're not quite there yet as far as needing it. So if you have a window near you and you want to crack it, feel free. I, I feel a little warm. Do you feel warm? I'm warm. He's warm. He's from Florida. Yeah. By way of New England. Right? That's right. <laughs> Oh, good. We're glad to be here today. My name, again, my name's Danny Chamberlain. I'm the Dean of Men at Landmark Baptist College. I'm also uh, the local chapter, local president of Dads Against Daughters Dating. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so if you're here and you've got a daughter and you send her down a landmark, uh, we can be friends. And uh, I'll let you know all about these guys. But uh, uh, we're, uh, I've, I've only been down there a couple of years. Uh, we've been associated with a college. I'll just share a little bit about how we got associated with them. Um, we have a thing called uh, Landmark uh, Freedom Baptist Curriculum. And I don't know what you use here at your school for curriculum, but um, we homeschooled our three children because where we were in Maine, there was no good Christian school. Uh, I was raised, uh, my father was a pastor in Maine for 28 years. Then he went over to New Hampshire and pastored there for another 10. But uh, we had a Christian school, so I was raised in that and graduated uh, from our Christian Academy there in Maine. And uh, uh, we used the ACE curriculum. And towards the end of my, uh, I went back there as an assistant actually, and towards the end of our time there, we started using some Landmark Freedom Baptist curriculum for some electives uh, in, our, in our high school. And so I became a little bit familiar with that. And while we were homeschooling, we wanted some more electives uh, for our kids to take. And so I did, uh, we ordered some. And my daughter's senior year, we were, we were starting to search for her for college. And uh, I'll get more into this when uh, we look into the Word of God a little bit later. Uh, but uh, uh, I asked my kids to do one thing for me. I said, when you graduate from high school, give me, give me one year of Bible college. Mm -hmm. And I said, give me one year of Bible college, and then if you feel God wants you to do that, do something else after that, then we'll support you in that as long as it's godly. Uh, and so uh, I asked that of all my kids. I said, just give me that one year. Well, my daughter, we started looking. It was our senior year, and she was, because she was our oldest. And so we started looking, looked at different ones, and she just couldn't get peace about anything. And uh, as we went around, we were, we were looking. She just couldn't find anything. We were, we were looking at two or three others a little bit further away from home, and I'm like, man, those are a long ways from home being up in Maine, and uh, <clears throat> we ordered her, her schoolwork for that year, and the order came in, and we ordered some electives for her from Landmark, and in that flyer, I, I knew about the curriculum, but I knew nothing about the church. I knew they were King James. I knew they were Baptist, and, uh, but I had no idea where Haines City was in, in the state of Florida. The only thing I knew about Florida growing up until I got married the only thing I knew about Florida growing up is that's where the rich people went on vacation. Yes. And uh, that's all I knew. I, they had this place down there called Walt Disney World, and the rich people went there because it wasn't me. And uh, I, was a pre I was a preacher's kid, so uh, uh, we, we didn't go to Florida. We, we went through tents out in the backyard. That was our vacation. But uh, uh, when we got married, my in-laws took us down to Florida for a vacation, and down to Kissimmee area, little did I know that was only a half an hour from Haines City, Florida. So when I got that order in that year, there was a flyer in there for Landmark Baptist College. I'm like, oh, they got a college down there. Let's take a look at it. So I pulled out this, 
this is a 50 year old talk and I pulled out a map, started looking for Haines City, Florida. I didn't Google it because my phone didn't have Google and, uh, and I wouldn't have known how to run it anyhow. But uh, uh, I found Haines City, Florida and punched it in on my GPS thing on my uh, computer and said, uh, well, it's only 30 minutes from Kissimmee. We were going down that spring for a visit. So we ended up going down and looking at the college. A few weeks later, my daughter's like, I think that's where God would have me to go. And I'm like, you sure? Because that's 27 hours away from home. <laughs> and, uh, and she's a daddy's girl, okay? And uh, so she's like, yeah, she says, that's where if, we'd never heard Pastor Carter preach. Uh, we'd never sat in a church service there until the day before we dropped her off. And, uh, but uh, that was our introduction to the college. A couple of years later, my oldest son uh, graduated from high school, and he was going to do the one year. He was going to... He was going to go to Bible college for the one year just because that's what dad wanted him to do. And uh, I wasn't a preacher up in Maine. I wasn't a pastor. Uh, we were just faithful in our local church. I had my own business doing heating, doing furnaces, boilers, outdoor wood boilers, things like that. We were faithful in our church. We were happy. Uh, business, business was going good. My son enjoyed the heating business and he was going to go to school for one year, come back and work for me. Uh, doing that and just be faithful in the church and uh, because God needs faithful men in the church too and a uh, uh, pastor can't do all the work he needs men behind him that will that will hold up his arms and, and complete the work for him and uh, so he decided to do that he went down there for the first year and about three quarters of the way through the year he emailed me or called me or something and said uh, uh, Dad, he says, I, th I think I'm going to come back uh, uh, a second year and get my associate's degree. And I said, okay. I said, why is that? And he's like, well, they started this singing group down here. And he says, I really enjoy it, and they're going to be doing some more stuff with that next year. And he says, I'd li really like to be involved in that. And I said, okay. And I talked to him. I said, okay. I said, do you think maybe God's calling you into the ministry or something? He's like, no. He says, I just... I just know God needs faithful men in the church, and the more Bible knowledge I can get, the better off I am. And I said, okay. I said, your, your job will be here anytime, no biggie. And uh, I said, uh, knock yourself out. And so he went back that second year, and about two months into that year, he called me up, and he's like, Dad, they want me to travel this next summer with a singing group, just like we're doing with these guys. And he says, if I do that, he says, they'll give me a free year of college. And I said, well, I said, I'm going to tell you right now. I said, uh, if you're going to go for, your th go for a third year, I said, you might as well just plan on going for a fourth and getting your degree. And so for a kid that was going to go down there and just take one year, he ended up being there for. It wasn't this past year. It was a year before he graduated, and he's actually on staff with us now down there. He started out on our maintenance department uh, because you know how it is with owning a camp and things like that. And Christian school and mission board and all that. There's always maintenance that needs to be done. And uh, so uh, uh, he started out on that, working on that. And then in January of this past year, uh, God moved him into our high school uh, as our athletic director. Uh, our high school has just taken off. Uh, two years ago, we were about 200 students. Last year, it jumped up to 250. And I believe my daughter can correct me on this, but the classes are already full for next year, I believe at least her, her class is, and uh, they're, they're on pace to have even more. And a lot of that's due to us staying open during the, I, I, know, I know we're in Michigan, I know you guys have a little bit of a different governor than what Florida has, and uh, so, uh, but uh, we're, we're thankful for our governor, and right off the bat. No, we're not trading, we're not trading. So, I don't, even, I don't even want our governor to run for president in 2024, but uh, uh, I'm afraid he might, but uh, uh, we do. We thank God for our, for our governor and uh, for all he's done for our state. And uh, uh, shortly into, right after this whole COVID thing started, Pastor Carter sent a, sent a letter to his office uh, just to let him know that, hey, Landmark ain't shutting down. And uh, it was shortly after that that uh, he put out a letter saying that church was essential in the state of Florida. And uh, uh, we, we were uh, happy for that. We did shut down our bus ministry for about eight weeks due to the, uh, some liability issues there on, on uh, Christian Law Association mentioned that, uh, recommended that just because of that. But even though that was shut down, we still did different things. 
uh, in order to stay in touch with our bus, minister, bus kids and keep the buses so that they were, when it was time to open them back up, they were going to be ready to go. And, uh, but uh, we thank God we're in the state of Florida. And if you don't know it, we're in Polk County. If you've ever heard of Sheriff Grady Judd, yep. uh, he's our sheriff. And he's, he is, he is a, a born-again Christian who uses his position to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, he actually comes to, uh, comes to our church every October for a roundup Sunday. He dresses up in, in western garb like a cowboy, wears a six-shooter on his hip, and helps take the offering. Our <laughs> offerings are up that Sunday. But, uh, uh, and then he comes. We also have a radio station down there. Uh, and you can get some of the information I'm talking about. We have a radio station, Gospel 90.3, that's a ministry of our church. And uh, there's actually, you can listen to it online anytime at gospel903.com, or you can go on, uh, go on your uh, Play Store, or what do they call it on Apple? I don't know what they call it on Apple. What is it? The App Store on Apple, and, and download the Gospel 90.3 app so you can take it with you wherever you go. And it's classic Southern Gospel. It's the old stuff. It's not the new stuff. It's the classic Southern Gospel and bluegrass music. And uh, uh, then at 9 o'clock every night, you can hear Pastor Mickey Carter, uh, one of the greatest preachers in all the world. Yeah. And uh, on the landmark hour, and at 10 o'clock every morning, you can hear Brother Lester Roloff with the Family Altar Program. Yeah. And uh, so it's a, it's a tremendous tool, and it, it reaches across the world into many countries. And uh, so we have that. We've got, the, of course, the day school that we've already talked about, the curriculum, which is primarily a homeschool-type curriculum. There's some, some church schools that use it primarily as their curriculum. A lot of people will supplement with it. And it, it, that's, a, that's a Baptist, uh, a Bible-based Baptist curriculum. And uh, it's, it's the real history of the United States based on the Word of God, based on our Constitution. Uh, the, uh, the math is not common core. Uh, it's, uh, it's real math. Uh, it's something that you can get and you can put your faith and trust in. Then in 1979, Pastor Carter saw the burden uh, to start a Bible college because he was tired, and your pastor and I talked about this. He was tired of sending his young people off and having them come back uh, weak on the Word of God, weak on their Bible doctrine. We take a stand on the King James Version of the Bible. That's the only thing we use. It's the only thing we believe in. Uh, we believe it's a perfect book, and it's something that we can put our foundation on. And uh, uh, we still, even after 40 plus years, we're still preaching the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. Amen. And uh, that's what we're all about down there. It's a, it's a ministry that is truly a ministry of Landmark Baptist Church. The college does not dictate to the church. Amen. The college does not run the church. Uh, everything that revolves, that takes place at Landmark Baptist Church revolves around Landmark Baptist Church, all the ministries. And... Uh, uh, in the summertime, we're, we're in our summertime now. We just had our, gra our college graduation uh, two Sundays ago. Uh, and uh, uh, now that we're in the summertime and a lot of the college students have gone home, our bus ministries are still rolling. Sunday schools are still going, uh, even, even in spite of the college students not being there. And uh, we do require all our college students to be uh, on a bus route. Uh, every year they're on the whatever bus they get put on. They're on that for four years or whatever time they are there. And uh, then we have uh, Soul One, and we, believe, we still believe Soul One and works. Uh, one of the first classes that our college students go through is personal evangelism. Uh, one of the things we do in the spring semester, uh, for instance, in January, the last Sunday of January is always our anniversary Sunday. Pastor Mickey Carter is not our pastor anymore. He's our pastor emeritus. Uh, he retired, if you want to call it that, on his 50th anniversary. He was 80, 85 years old, and uh, he'd pastored there for 50 years. And uh, he's still preaching, still going strong. Uh, he'll be 87 this summer, but uh, still, still, again, still preaching, still filling pulpits, still doing what God has called him to do. And I think he'll do that up until the day he dies, I think. But I hope when I'm, I hope when I'm 75, I have the energy he's got. But uh, here in some of the stories, we have some books on the back table. Uh, one of them is His Hand is Real. It's just some, some stories about things that have taken place in his life and in his ministry and things like that. With our camp ministry, we got to go out to your camp uh, yesterday, I believe it was. Uh, beautiful. You guys got a beautiful camp uh, out, out uh, somewhere. 
which some, somewhere here, but uh, beautiful camp. We've got a camp down there in Florida. Uh, I know you got mosquitoes up here that are the size of bald eagles, and they take a pint of blood every time they st stick their thing in your arm. But uh, we have alligators and snakes and spiders. And uh, we were down there about three weeks getting ready for camp, and we drained our pool out. And because uh, down there you can't just jump in a pond and go swimming. Uh, but uh, we drained our pool out and there was a three foot alligator in the pool. And uh, we had to pin him down and catch him and take him out past the camp and drop him in the, in the creek out there. And he's still hanging around, but uh, now he's about four to five feet long. And uh, so uh, those are just some of the things. And then of course we have snakes and spiders, things like that. But uh, we're, we're moving up in the world because this is gonna be the first year uh, uh, this summer that we're going to have air conditioning in our camp. And uh, we've never had air It's always been a rustic camp. And if you went and looked at it, if you think yours is rustic, come down and look at Florida. Uh, we were looking at that and they're like, wow, this is nice. And <laughs> you got a, you got a great camp. I'm, I'm a little envious of it. But uh, uh, you come down to Florida, you can be at camp in uh, 100 degree weather. And uh, but we do have uh, the camp that goes on. A lot of decisions have been made, I'm sure, as you guys know, uh, in, in young people's lives. And a lot of young people have been reached because of camp ministry. And uh, so uh, we want to continue with that even down in Florida. And uh, uh, back on the table, one of the books that you'll find back there is this one here. It's uh, called The Deep and Wide Devotional. It's a, a quarterly devotional. It's put out by our college. Uh, it, it's written fresh every quarter. Uh, uh, the next one, this one covers April, May, and June. Uh, they're uh, getting ready. They've, they're probably in the process of printing the July ones coming up. But uh, we make that free of charge. We can either send a bunch of them to the church or they've got a tablet back there. They can actually sign that up for it, sign you up for it. If that's something that you're interested in, it will come to your email every morning. And uh, we're working on an app. They're hoping by this fall to have the app up and running so that you can download an app specifically for our devotional. And uh, you open it up in the morning devotional, plus ones in the past will be there so that you can go back, because sometimes they, uh, they have ones that are written that are written in a series. And so you can go back and you can read the other ones and read it through. Gives you, gives you a scripture verse or a list of verses, and then uh, you can also read through your Bible in a year with that. But that's, that's something that's written either by men on staff or men associated with our ministry, uh, graduates of our college, things like that. And uh, so uh, that's available back there. The guys can help you with that. We're also in the process of starting something. It's on the Apple Play Store, right, the App, St App Store right now. It's a uh, landmark marksman uh, club. It's a, we call it the Marksman's Club. It's for prospective students. If you're here and you're in high school, and you sign up for that today, we've got a limited supply of t-shirts back there. But if you sign up for that, right now we can't, it's in the process of getting approved from on the Google store on the, for the Androids. But if you have an iPhone, you can download that and sign up for our app. It's just, we're not going to inundate you with a bunch of information and bug you to come to Landmark. We're not about that. Uh, we really aren't. We're not high pressure. If God wants you in a Bible college, uh, someplace else, we want you there. If God wants you at Landmark, that's where we want you. But it's just a way for us to be able to put things out there, whether it's merchandise or, or different things about the college, student days, advertisements for the college, or things like that. Um, it's something that you can open up and look at. We put it out there. It's up to you to take a look at it. And uh, It's a Bible college that if you go to, you're going to leave that Bible college with a stronger, stronger belief and a stronger stand on the Word of God and the doctrines of the Word of Amen. God. And uh, I just want to share this with you real quickly in the last couple of minutes. In the book of James, it says in James chapter 2, verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. And I've got a, a, a lesson that I could take the time. But we don't have time this morning to teach that. But I, I grew up in a preacher's home, okay? Uh, my father started a church over in Maine when I was three years old, and I was, I was raised in that church. I got saved at a young age. I don't remember the exact date, but I can take you to the exact place. And uh, trusted Christ as my Savior as a young age. And uh, uh, I always grew up in that, and I, 
you hear about, okay, Abraham was a friend of God. Why was Abraham a friend of God? And I'll just give you the three points real quickly. Well, one reason he was called a friend of God was because he went where God wanted him to go. I had a young man that worked for me. I, I, like I said, I was a businessman. I've got a, I've got a master's in, in heating oil. Uh, I, can, I had my own business doing that, working for myself. Uh, you say, what are you doing at a Bible college? They, they called me up and asked me to be the dean of men. And I felt God was leading us that way. We administered to the students of the college. Uh, while we were up in Maine, uh, we'd fly students up to, to hang out with us, come home on vacations, things like that. Uh, minister to them up there, and Pastor Parsons said, you're ministering to our students from afar. Why don't you come down here and minister to them right here? We prayed about it. God opened up the door. But for, for a maniac to leave Maine and go to the state of Florida, it was, it was an act of God. Trust me, if, if, you, if you know me, my heart's in Maine, just like I know, I know Miss Mackey's heart when she's in Florida, her heart's up here in, in the UP. What do they call them, Upers? Upers, and uh, she's, a, she's a Uper. And I'm a, you ask my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law's from New York State up in the Adirondacks. I'm a maniac, her daughter married a maniac. And, uh, but, uh, but I wanted to be a friend of God, and I wanted to go where God wanted me to go. And I had a young man working for me when I was doing construction, and uh, doing drywall work, and I taught him how to do drywall and, and all this, and, and his parents had gotten him into the post office, and he was 18, 19, 20 years old, making 50 plus thousand dollars a year, uh, living at home, had all the toys, but he had a lifestyle that was terrible. He'd been walking with God uh, when he graduated from high school, but uh, he wanted to work with me, but I couldn't guarantee him 40 hours a week, every week, year round, but the post office good. And uh, he joined the post office, went to work, had all kinds of money, uh, but unfortunately it took him away from God. And uh, uh, God got his attention one morning, I won't go into that whole story, but God got his attention, and uh, he says, there's more to life than this. And he walked away from the post office, went back to Bible college, now he's serving as a missionary. Amen. But it, when, he, when he surrendered to go back, get back with God, his parents looked at him when he was walking away from the post office and told him, they said, you're committing financial suicide. I have to stand up here and say today that his parents are not friends with God. Why? Because they're not allowing their kids to go where God want them, wants them to go. It may not be landmark. It may not be some other good school. But are you willing to allow parents, are you willing to allow your kids to go where God wants you to go? If you study the story of Abraham, Abraham had a son that was very precious to him. But at the same time, he was willing to give that son up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we willing to give our kids up for the Lord Jesus Christ? Kids, what are you willing to give up? You say, well, I want, I want to be a heating guy. I want to be a plumber. I want to be an electrician. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Our churches need electricians. Our churches need plumbers. But are you a Christian plumber? Are you a Christian doctor? Are you a Christian whatever? Because as a Christian, you need to know, hey, this is what the Bible teaches. It's one thing to be saved, but it's another thing to know what you believe and why you believe it. And so many times... We look at our young people and say, man, I don't want my, my son or my daughter over in Africa. I don't want my daughter or son somewhere halfway around the world where I only see them once every four years. Well, you stop and think, what did Christ do for us? Are we going to be called the friend of God and do what God wants us to do? Let's bow forward to prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here. Help us to honor and glorify you with everything that takes place this morning. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.